Yes. All right, hello, welcome back to another episode of the EJB Talk Show. I am very excited to be doing this again. Here I have a very special guest, percussionist Alex Fraga. How are you doing today, Alex? I'm okay, I'm okay, can't complain. <laughs> what did you get up to today? Um, just finished a rehearsal with Rendell, working with a new piece with electronics. Um, had a meeting for one of the research labs that I help with. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Nice. Yeah. So you're, you're currently a second year DMA yes, student here exactly. in yeah. percussion performance. So how, how's your year been so far? Um, pretty good. Um, I mean, I'm still adjusting a little bit to the program and to, to the new life here in Canada. Um, have more work to do outside of school, which is always something right. a little tricky to balance. But still, I can complain lots of good opportunities and it looks like it's going to be another great year. Right. So that's great. Nice. Yeah. We'll work. We'll talk more about your time here at UFT yeah. soon. Yeah. I'm gonna work a little bit more chronologically here. But um, what would you say is your earliest musical memory that you could have, that you mm. could recall? Not playing, right? Anything. Not playing, no. Um, I had a bunch of CDs at home when I was very young. They're all very bad. I didn't oh, like, like yeah, it was like old CDs. Okay. Uh, and maybe finals too. I don't know. Um, but I have this memory. My parents are not musicians, and they only listen to like country music, and I always hated really? that. Really? Yeah. Um, and there was one CD that I remember they had that it was not country. It's a famous like Brazilian singer called Caetano Veloso, and like I remember I was very young, and I uh, I only liked one song in the, in the CD, and I used to sing it like over and over, and I forgot about it for like for like 15 years, and then I came back to it. I don't know, like when I started studying music and I was like, wow, this guy is so cool. <laughs> and only then I realized like the big, the, the influence that that had on me. Right. But my, my mom probably had- Without even knowing too. Without even yeah. knowing, yeah. But my mom still probably has a tape somewhere of me and my brother singing that when we were like three or four. Really? Yeah. So you, you grew up in Brazil, Yeah. Yeah. right? So how did you like start getting into like playing music yourself? Was it, was it something very common for kids your age at the time? No. Um, no. One big difference is that we don't music at school. Okay. So if you want to learn music, I mean, at least we didn't when I was growing up. Maybe they're starting to change that. I'm not sure mm -hmm. uh, what kids nowadays are doing. But when I was growing up, I, I just insisted with my mom that I wanted to take music lessons. Just because? Just, just, just teenager, like, I don't know, I was 11, okay. maybe 10. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to play. I just wanted to try something, and it was interesting because I, I was I was the young brother, so I was all looking at my brother like whatever he wants to do, I'm gonna do it too. Right. So he wanted to take guitar lessons, and he found a private teacher. We went there together, and he started taking lessons. And the teacher looks at me and say like, no, he's too young, because I was okay. still a little shorter. So right. I couldn't start with the guitar right away, and then a few months later, I took some like electric keyboard lessons for okay. a so few that, months. So that's technically your first instrument. That was my first instrument. It didn't last long though. Right, and um, it kind of like it's not even a real piano. Yeah, it's sense. not. A really, yeah, it's something like in between. Right. And at at that age, I didn't know like what exactly was the instrument that I was using. Um, I also didn't like practicing at all. Right. So the teacher again come <laughs> to my mom and says like he's not practicing. Um, <laughs> Which is interesting nowadays because I look back and I remember I really like improvising and creating my own stuff. Interesting. And he wanted he wanted to teach me like songs, and I didn't want to learn like songs. I wanted to create my stuff. Like do it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was doing like he left the room to teach my brother something. He was teaching like two students at the same time, right? And I like immediately start like creating my own stuff. And whenever he comes back, I try to show him what he wanted me to play, but that's not what I wanted to play. So end of this story, my mom just decided that I shouldn't take music okay so I didn't take lessons for like two or three years and I had to insist a lot to come back to it and then I decided to go for drum set and then I didn't stop well anymore. what got you into drum set at first I just liked like rock bands and I don't know I wanted to have my bands with my friends at school was, that, that was, was like thing. kind of like popular music in America something that was super big in Brazil at the time yeah yes yeah, yeah. and it still is um, really um, I mean, I did play a little bit of Brazilian stuff too, but not as, I don't know, it was, it was kind of like a mix I get, when I started. Your interest was more in like being a drummer in a rock band. Yeah, 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 yeah. More and I, know, I mean, I was starting to take um, English classes at the time and it helped me a lot learning the language as well. True, so it was yeah. just also like the experience. Cause, cause also like 
Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And also the fact that I was playing games and everything was in English, so it was like just a moment in my life that I decided to immerse in that world. And now it's paying off, even yeah. though my mom would never understand. Now it's paying off, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. When? How old were you when like you started getting to that kind of side of? I was around like fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, yeah. so like middle of high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like starting, well, not starting, but getting into the drum set. Like, um, how was your kind of journey with that? At the time, well, at first I just wanted to play the songs I listened to, right? right. Um, and then at school, every now and then we had to do some group projects. And I remember um, I was probably like 16 when we had to form like a street drumming group at school with a few friends. Was this for like a music class? Not a music thing? class, but it was just a group project, and we had to do like a bunch of projects in different areas together. Interesting. And we like come up with a theme and they assign us like a color this is your color and you you have your own t-shirt and do their own thing and you have your song and we drum with the songs that we create yeah so i was one of the few people in the group that had some experience with music so i just taught my friends like some basic rhythms i was like leading the group the whole time um and it was a great time and i think more and more the more and more i do i did that i realized that i wanted to take music more seriously right. um, at some point a random guy just knocked on my door after lunch and was like hey i heard you practicing drum set because i lived in the house at the time okay and it was probably very loud and all the neighbors <laughs> like hated me uh, but at some point a guy just stops by it's like hey i like your playing you want to play in my band i was like yeah. really <laughs> so at, I was still in high school. I still in high school, so I was like 16, and I was playing in a band with like a bunch of older guys. They were like 25 or something. Yeah. Um, so I started like playing parties and stuff like that. So when I was 17, I had to make the decision of what I wanted to do, and after I don't know a long process, I decided I was gonna do music. Right. Yeah. Working working a bit backwards from there, like since you say they don't really teach music in schools, yeah. like in Brazil, like how. How would you say that you gave yourself the opportunity to play with other people? Because that's usually, they can hear in Canada, that's yeah. their only way that people have figured out that they like playing with other people. Yeah. Did you kind of find your own way to collaborate with like your friends or something? Or? Yeah, yeah mo mostly through friends. And uh, the same way I decided to take some like uh, lessons and started to play with a few friends, I think there was, uh, this was something common with, like, within my social group. There was at least like three or four friends that were also taking lessons, like guitar, bass. And all into it. Yeah, and, and all a little bit into it. And we had like a few bands that we liked that was in common and we right. got together to play right. the music and then we tried to compose. It was probably like very bad, but still it was a great time <laughs> and I learned a lot through all those experiences. And you yeah. starting on the drum kit, like did, did you like kind of pick it up kind of naturally in a sense? Like with your sense of like prior improvisation on keyboard and stuff yeah that kind of did you kind of apply that to i think so it? and i think that's one of the reasons i really like drum set because it's mm -hmm. a creative process like the way right. we practice different rhythms like you learn one rhythm and then you do a variation of the same rhythm and then another variation that's right. and then i just got obsessed with all the variations like right. ever since i go to bed and i'm thinking of new rhythms and trying to combine <laughs> things in a different way and that's how you build independence right with yeah. drum set um and i think that's why it clicked for me um oh. yeah so, so you decided that you want to go to university for music yeah. around like grade eleven age, I guess. Yeah. So, what what did you have to do to make sure like you were gonna get into a school? Well, then, then then everything changed because right. I had a lot of experience like reading drum charts, and drum set notation, uh -huh. and that was not gonna do for university, of course. <laughs> um, so I realized um, I had to take private lessons on music theory. Um, at the time, more, more classical oriented, you'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So at the time, I was talking to. There was one person in my city that had a university degree in music. So I just went to him, explained my situation. Like, this is what I play. This is what I know. What I need to learn in order to get to the school. And he was the one who started to teach me a lot about music theory, reading music in different clubs, and all right. that music theory. Uh, arrows. We, we need to do arrow skills for universities in Brazil when we're not applying to to right. the undergrad. So we need to do solfege and all that as well. Um, was was the only kind of option for a post secondary degree in music just like classical around you, or was there no other option? Like, would you even? I could do. Jazz? I could have done popular music too, um, right. or jazz even. Yeah, like, yeah. I could have done like, because I went to classical. I mean, I ended up in classical percussion. I actually started out as a composition major because really? of that teacher, because he got his 
at, at the time they had this degree that was both in conducting and composition. It was like one degree. And this is in Brazil. So. Yeah, wow. but he went to school probably like early 80s. So by the time I was applying, which is like I don't know, late 2000s, mm -hmm. it, everything had changed. But I decided to go with him. Like he, he said, I was I was gonna get more opportunities if I had if I tried composition first. So that's what I did, and I never like questioned because uh, I didn't know. I lived in a different city. I was applying to study in a different city. I didn't know the city that well. I didn't know the school that well. There, there weren't that, that many people that I could talk to. Right. So I just went with whatever he told me, and it didn't ended up like working out. I did had to. Um, the grades that I had in high school didn't matter for my university application, okay. and I was a pretty good student. So what I did was like three months before uh, high school ended, I just stopped going to classes at all and moved to a different city to take music lessons. No way. So I could actually study because it was like a sh the timeline was very short. Like, so I had to learn everything in, like ten months. So did you like not finish high school? I finished it. Oh, okay. Because I already had the grade to pass at that point. That's so I was just weird. like screw this. I'm, I'm gonna it yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. They don't care like what what's their GPA or whatever for high school. They just wanted to pass the admission tests for university. Right. So I I could like just stop going to classes and right. do something else because I already passed it. Already. Right. Well, yeah. I I wouldn't know it, but like, what was the university you went to for your um, So my home state is called Minas Gerais, and I was born in a smaller city that's two hours away from the capital called okay. Divinopolis. And the city I went to is uh, the one at the capital. It's the Federal University of Minas Gerais. It's probably like the biggest school in the state. Okay. Um, yeah. And how, how was the... So you started as a composition major. Yeah. Like, how was kind of entering school like that for you? It was very hard. I mean, being the drum set player in the composition uh, right. department is very tricky. I think they looked at me like differently. Did you already have like a handful of like kind of compositions on your belt? Not really. At that point? No. Not really. Um, the you only thing got, you got into the program. Yeah, you you don't need you don't need that in order to get into the program. You only, of course, there's a test, and the composition test was just you need to compose a variation on something they give you like on the spot. You have like two or three hours. They mm -hmm. give you a short excerpt, and you do a variation, and then you explain what you did. Oh. There's like a niche say that you need to write explaining what is your thought process. So do you think that's kind of more on like the academia side of like um, doing music? I like? mean, the, the I think it's both. Like okay. the, the fact that you need to write about what you wrote is definitely like more towards the academic part. Right. Um, but it also like if what you wrote makes sense, it means that you have a pretty good ear. Because right. you, you're just writing. Not, I can't remember if you had a keyboard to use for the test or not. But still, like you need to have a pretty good like musical memory in order to do all that. And I didn't have that before I started the preparation. But during right. the preparation that I had, I, I was able like to prove at least like something to get a passing grade to get to school. And then everything changed from there. So that's very interesting, actually. So what kind of made you like make the switch? Did you even did you like that the composition program for you? Not really. Um, it was very hard for me. Right. And, I mean, as I said before, like I, I, I feel like I was the different one. Um, right. It was just classical music all the time, and, and that's and not only like classical music, but the only like the more experimental uh, part of classical music. A lot of like uh, post tonal repertoire, right. which is. Which I learned to like and to understand. And you're, you're kind but, of in that world right now. Yeah, kind but of. it's not like this is the only thing that exists for me. You know, it's never like that. Right. And when with percussion, we can do anything. Right. We can. Yeah. We can play whatever we want. And uh, yeah, it's it's more I don't know free. I would yeah. say. And then the 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 degree that I was getting, um, the the moment I got there, the first time I saw the percussion ensemble playing, I I, I decided I was going to switch. Interesting. Yeah. And. I never had the chance to see all the instruments like until then, like marimba, timpani, all that, uh, vibraphone. So I was, the moment I saw, it, I was like, I need to play with these guys. So and they, they let you in the like the program. I had to go test that. again. I, I had to oh. I had to audition. So you had um, to practice. Ooh. Yeah. So then I was in school, and then I started taking private lessons again, so I could audition. Wow. Yeah. So was your undergrad kind of like more than four years kind of thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. six. Six yeah, years, yeah. so like the first two yeah. were... I mean, the first year was like, I'm not sure what I'm doing, like maybe I should switch. <laughs> the second year was just preparation to actually switch. Wow. Then okay. I take the audition, and then I switch. And then it's a requirement for us to have four years of private lessons so we can graduate. Right. So there was no way I could finish in less than six if I wanted to get the, the percussion degree. Like I did. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious about this, because like, one, like music isn't really taught in like post-secondary and down schools mm -hmm. but like there are 
like university like programs in classical music. So, yeah. what, what's like the the landscape of classical music like, or the culture of classical music in Brazil? Well, I would say it's very small compared to North America in general. Uh, there are a few like conservatories that you can get a training from a young age. Okay. But you need to, be, need to be lucky enough to be born in a region where they have one, which was right. not my case, like not even close. <laughs> right. It wasn't really a school that I could go to to get the preparation that I needed to get to university. So, uh, and some of my friends, some of my undergrad, they came from those schools. Like they had some background on classical training from an earlier oh, wow. uh, age. And I had to catch up with all of them, which is, right. was intense, but it was fine. Was like... So, you starting in classical music, especially in performance, how was your kind of mindset going into that, given that your, your start in music and your, your like motivation in music is all like popular music yep. and rock bands yeah, and yeah. playing drums, like, how did you kind of deal with that shift of, this is like all you're doing now, and yeah. that was what you were doing before, kind of thing? Well, at first... Like for the first two years, my approach was I'm not the pop musician anymore and I'm gonna like stop all of that and restart. And right. that's what I tried to do. And then I realized I'm always gonna be in between. And it's something yeah. I'm fine with right now. And it like actually makes me center. much happier, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm happy to play all the contemporary music concerts, but I'm also happy to play with all the samba groups and all the other things that right. I do here in the city. And I love all of that and I like the diversity. Yeah. Right. If I had stayed with like 100% classic all the time, I would be bored right now. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think I would be like authentic to myself. Right. Yeah. So, were there any like cool highlights that you would talk about in your undergrad experience that stuck out to you? Oh, many. Um, I think I'll, I'll pick one that is very interesting. So, okay. at the school I went to, we didn't have a lot of practice rooms. Okay. I had two rooms. One, one was like the big percussion studio with most of the instruments and the other one was a bit smaller. So we use it as like the, the room for all the lessons. How, how big, how, like, how many people were in the studio? Uh, around like 14, 15. Okay, uh, so that's 12. a lot of people for two, for two rooms. That's two a rooms, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so of course we had to practice together most of the time. Sometimes I just bring an instrument to the hallway and practice in the hallway. Huh. And... There, there is the very bad part of that, which means like you can't really hear yourself most of the times. I mean, imagine someone playing like a rudimental drum set, uh, <laughs> a drum, drum, snare drum solo, and then someone practice, practicing rebounds and you're trying to learn like bah, on top of all of that, right. you lose. <laughs> um, but there's also some very good things because we're always seeing each other practice. Mm -hmm. and exchanging like tips like all the time right and it was normal like if we're getting in the room it's just one big room like there's four people practicing we get there i'm drinking coffee and observing like the uh, all the fourth year the, the students that they are about to get, graduate practicing mm -hmm. their pieces for the recitals mm -hmm. and we can learn a lot from that yeah and, and it was also very easy to come come to them and ask questions and it, whenever they see you you're doing something stupid they stop you too <laughs> so you don't waste your time until your next lesson so i mean there was it, it is hard but i also feel like i gained a lot from that experience as well. right how yeah. how is the kind of direction of your of your percussion ensemble you know, like who who led it like who is um was my main teacher, Fernando, who also studied with Ayun for his really? doctorate. Yeah, so this is one of the reasons I ended up here. Uh, he went to McGill for his doctorate. Um, and at the time I was there, he was the only percussion teacher and he was responsible for the percussion ensemble. And the percussion ensemble was one of the biggest like things for the percussion program because we didn't get a lot of orchestra experience. The orchestra was small. The okay. repertoire for us was like boring, <laughs> mostly like county rests. Yeah. Um, because the percussion part was not a priority for for the orchestra, like it was, it was something mostly for the strings, which is good because most of the times you got paid to play with the orchestra because okay. they they had to have someone to sit there for the um, <laughs> all the conductor students and for the composition students as well, right. and for us it was just like sitting most of the time, so they ended up like finding a way to pay at least one or two percussionists to stay there, so the. Percussion ensemble became one of the big, big things, and we used to tour a lot. Like I would say, we had like seven shows per semester, something like that, and we would be like one or two in the school, and everything else was in a different part of the city or in a different city. Right. So I remember having a great time just traveling around and uh, recording like stuff for TV, a lot of 
good things about their program. Yeah. So how how would you describe? How would you say? No, let me rephrase that. Would you say that your your time in your undergrad there really like developed you? Definitely. As a musician. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In so many ways. Yeah. I mean, as a musician, as a person too, and yeah. I don't know. Right. So, f- what made you like pursue a master's degree? after your bachelor's well by the time i was about to graduate um a teacher came from the u.s with a fulbright scholar and he was a fulbright scholar and ended up at the school where i was studying it mm-hmm. and he was a percussionist too so we got very close we played a few shows together we actually went to a conference in south africa together so it's someone like oh. i became very close to and at the time i was already thinking like i wanted to stay at school yeah. like at that point going yeah. going to like out there was not something I know I wanted to do I felt like I was just getting started okay. and I w- I wasn't very happy with the possibilities that I had at home um, I already had one experience abroad I got that during my undergrad I got a grant to go to the US for one year so that was my first year as a percussion uh, major was abroad um, uh-huh. So I had had like some experience with the language. Uh, I had someone that was very close. That where, where was did you willing. go? I went to Northern Illinois University. That's like very close to Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So that's where he taught, and I just decided to apply there. Um, I got a he got me a TA to go study and to help me with the costs. So I was like, yeah, this is a great opportunity. I'll just go. Right. So where did where did you end up for your masters? Yeah. So that was oh, in that Illinois. Was there, yeah. That, that was, was it. That's yeah. Cool. Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I stayed there for two years and then I came back. Right. Yeah. How was your time in your master's there? Like, very, very good, very different. Um, I, I had to start teaching more. I taught the first, like, was the first time teaching undergrad level courses. Like, very challenging, especially because of the language as well. But yeah, right. um, I, had, I got to play a lot of burn ball stuff, uh, started gig- gigging with orchestras, like small orchestras, a little bit. Uh, preparing for a lot of auditions, believe it or not, and just orchestra auditions. Um, <laughs> yeah, studying a lot of snare drum and technique. I felt like my technique got much better at that point. Um, yeah, I mean, lo- lots of good memories. Also, the award music program there was very good. Um, I was playing a lot of brim bao, but I also got some experience with uh, stupan, Middle Eastern percussion, Chinese music ensemble, a lot of different things. How did you start doing brim bao? Because I, I remember you had that on your that, Yeah, that was because of that uh, teacher, right? So his research was on brim bao and capoeira, which is like the martial art yeah, that uses yeah. that instrument. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's how I met him and that's how we started playing together and there's this chamber music with only beer balls that he had at the time so wow. I, we started a group in Brazil and I played with a group in the US when I was there so that's that, that, that was also one of the main reasons I wanted to go there right yeah so after your master's degree what made you want to pursue a DMA then well I took after some that. time off oh how, now comes the sad part um, okay yeah so I took some time off I went back home um I had some personal stuff I had to take care of and I wanted to be there. Um, And then the pandemic came and I was at the time applying for a lot of jobs in Brazil and I felt like I was doing very well. But the main issue for me was that I had to validate my master's diploma in Brazil so they could let me sign the contracts. So what started happening was that I won a job. I mean, I was supposed to win a job, but they didn't give me the job because the the master's diploma wasn't validated yet and because of the pandemic was taking forever for the process like to finish Mm -hmm. um and they were complaining about a few things about my research and whatnot because it didn't meet the requirements of the school that i was applying for a lot of like bureaucracy that i didn't want to deal with (laughs) so at that time i was just i already had come here to toronto once to visit and when that started happening i was like i'm done i'm just gonna go to school again because if they're gonna make me wait better get another degree because it's going to give me more opportunities to balance yeah. salary and everything and it was a good decision because then I, I, I finally like won a two year contract at a university in Brazil and again they didn't let me sign because of that thing uh, so I just ended up right. coming here yeah. so after your masters you went back to Brazil was that kind of your plan like if that went through like you do your undergrad in, back home in Brazil and then you, you leave for your masters and still go back go back home to like work yeah at the, at the time I thought I was going to stay in Brazil yeah wow okay. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 so then you ended up here so what options do you have from there like was this kind of like your main 
choice to to do a DMA. Yeah, yeah. I only, I only applied to UFT. I really? didn't apply anywhere else. Yeah. I mean, it was I I, I knew at the time I didn't want to go back to the US, uh, mostly because of immigration, and okay. it's so complicated to mm-hmm. actually become a resident there. And um, doing my master was a big problem that I couldn't accept gigs that were like last minute because I had to get a document signed oh, every time. Yeah. Um, I couldn't even work part time. And here, when I got here, we could work part time. Now we can work for full time, yeah. which is great. Like I don't need to keep track of how many hours I work. Like I work as much as I need, and then I go back to school. Um, so I knew like Canada would be a great option. Um, I knew Ayun, who's the head of the percussion department here. Did you Did you meet her at all before? I met or? her in Brazil, actually. Did yeah. she do like a master class there? Um, yeah, my my undergrad teacher organized a percussion festival once, and he brought a lot of people from North America. Ayun, a few people from the US too. Uh, so yeah, every kind of like I I want to work with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I knew it was, she was like amazing in everything she does, and a, a person that I could learn a lot from. So, did, yeah. did she remember you at all? She did, cause I, I I was the one who picked her up at the airport. No way. Yeah, my teacher sent me to pick her up. <laughs> yeah, so we came like talking like all the way. Yeah. <laughs> what year were you? Um, it was probably like I don't know my third year. Third year. second year as a percussion student I don't know wow. what's that in total like year four of university something oh, like that man. that's crazy yeah so then <laughs> what 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 was that like then like auditioning for here did she well, remember you like well she I, did she remember you but yeah like, and we talked a little bit before three emails but it was still like pandemic time so I did an audition here in Toronto it was right, everything it was, was through a video right. um we talked during the interview of course mm-hmm. um but it was just like submit a bunch of videos I I mostly used stuff that I already had recorded in the past. Like it was, there was probably like one or two new things that I recorded at home. Um, still, like probably not like the greatest recording ever. But at that time, we we're just doing what we could do with the resources that we had. And I'm glad that they said that was good enough for them because otherwise, I don't know what to be doing now. <laughs> right. Yeah, it'll be a different life. So, I guess, so as a DMA student, you you need to have like a thesis. Yeah. Like that covers your whole like degree essentially right yeah. you're, you're studying you're researching it the whole time yeah so what, what's yours um, if you don't mind sharing that. yeah yeah I'm, I'm researching Brazilian rhythms uh, okay. I'm actually doing like rhythmic analysis on Brazilian rhythms I'm not sure if you're familiar with that but it's very common for certain genres in Brazil to have a subdivision that is not even okay um, and I'm measuring that and talking about like how that is organized oh yeah that's interesting yeah so, coming coming in, well, I don't mean to hit that. Coming in here, like in last year, you were first year DMA. Mm-hmm. Like, were you? What was your mindset like coming into this? Like, one new country. Yeah. And two, like new degree, new like basically everything. Yeah, for you. I had no idea what to expect to be honest. Right. Like, I knew the one time that I came here to visit wasn't enough to know like how the school would be like, how intense would be, um, and also how hard it would be to adapt but uh, because of everything i went through i was just like i'm, I'm gonna make this work um, yeah if i had to work i know somewhere else to pay for my expenses here i'll do it like I, i'm here i came here to do what it takes to get the degree and i guess that's what i'm doing and what yeah. do you what do you want out of it like do you want to be like a professor or do you want yeah to be- this will be one of the final goals um mm-hmm. Has it always been a final goal? Like not that? really. I, I wasn't. I was never really picky about like this is what I want, and if that doesn't happen, like I, I'm gonna be sad. Like right. as long as I'm doing music, I'm happy. Like if right. I, I'm playing all the time, I'm happy. Uh, if I'm teaching all the time, I'm also happy. Uh, yeah. If I'm teaching young kids, I'm also happy. I don't know. I, <laughs> I like working with music, like generally. I do want something that's stable, though. That's the only thing that worries yeah. me now, especially after the pandemic, because I was doing a lot of freelance stuff, like teaching right. at three three different schools, but like privately. Mm-hmm. And when that went away, then I realized like this is not something long term. Right. Yeah. So, I'm trying to think. Do I have any more questions on that side? I don't think so. Well, Good. actually, no. I do have another question. Okay. So, you know, two D. Two degrees later, and you're halfway through this one. Yep. How have you kind of kept in touch with that like beginner self of you, like starting playing drum kit and wanting to just, I assume, just like make songs with your friends. Yeah. And how did you kind of, how have you kind of kept that in your life in a sense? 
leading up to here? Yeah, to be honest, I missed it like at many different stages. I felt like I missed that part, and I still like to like. I f I think that when I graduate here, I need to have like that somehow I don't know if it's gonna be like yeah. a band or just a friend that I play with like from time to time just yeah. for fun um, uh, I, I was always like very intense when it comes to work and as I said in the beginning I had to catch up with people that had so much more experience with me mm -hmm. and when that happens I like I do what it takes and if I had to stop like having a lot of fun that, that's what I do happens. yeah, yeah. Right. I, I do what it takes uh, yeah, I really want to yeah. make this happen. And, yeah. Right. I was really curious about that because yeah. I kind of come from very similar, yeah, like musical upbringing, especially like really being into music, yeah, really, like drunk and all that. And it's so easy to lose that yeah. in the academic setting, right? Especially since like all, yeah. all they're doing here is just not that. Yeah. You know? yeah. I remember I brought this up in one of the DMA seminars that I attended. Was, okay. I don't know how the discussion started, but. At some point, I remember saying, like, yeah, I started playing music because I wanted to play for fun. And for <laughs> some people, that was a little surprising. Because, I mean, a lot of people, they start, like, their parents force them to learn music. Piano, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So it wasn't, like, a pleasant experience for them. But right. here, I'm here because I wanted to. Yeah. I actually chose to be here. I mean, the, I had all the reasons in the world not to be here. Like, my, my parents are not musicians. No one in my family does music. They don't understand what I do. They come to the recitals that I play, they're like, what is this? this is <laughs> <laughs> do they still not get it? Is, it? is that something that doesn't really change? Uh, I, I don't think the web, I mean, most of what I do, I don't think they will ever get it. And, and, and that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like they support me the way they can. And, right. Yeah, and it treats, it treats you well. So yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 And, and they know it makes me happy. Right. So. Did you... I'm just very curious, like, did you ever really get into classical music at all? Because you're, you spent, uh, how many years? That's, this is like a culminative 10 years? Probably like 10 years of university. 10 years yeah, yeah. of yeah. classical, yeah. classical music yeah. degree. Like, yeah. did you ever really find yourself getting into stuff like that? Like, I do, like, there's, there, there's a moment for everything right now, that's what I would say. Um, <laughs> like... I learned to listen to music for another rhythms, ryth reason, which is okay. different than the one I was used to listen music for. Usually it was just Le let's have like, some fun, yeah. yeah. But sometimes it can be like, I don't know, it can be listening to a process or thinking or listening right. to development, development of ideas and stuff like that. And I always liked learning, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was a pretty good student in, at, at high school, so I was always like learning new things. Right. If there was something music in music that I didn't get, I wanted to learn it. It doesn't yeah. matter like how crazy it is, like I'm gonna get crazy this. theory or whatever. Like I'm gonna listen to this. If if I had to listen to it like, a thousand times, I'm gonna listen to it a thousand times until right. I get it. Um, so I, I I like it. I mean, it doesn't mean that it is everything for me, mm -hmm. but I, I really like it. Right? Do you do you respond well to because? For, for DMA, you have so many like assignments, so much like work yeah. that isn't practicing to do. Yeah, like, yeah, that one. And like in the Randall interview I did, he kind of spent his whole life up until here in like conservatory mm -hmm. environments, and I guess for you it's just mostly playing as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like how. Is that, does that kind of good student of you carry over here where like you're still managing and surviving? With that, or I guess say? surviving more than managing. Um, right. I mean, I, I still I, I really like all this research stuff too. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it is easy. Mm -hmm. I only think that the big change for me since I got here is that I need to get more done in less time. Right. No matter what it is, like when I'm practicing, like what use it to take me like two hours to do, I need to do it in one hour, and right. that's it. I need to move on to the next thing. Um, I guess this is the only like big change that I've noticed in the past two years. Right on. Yeah. I see. You. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for me then. Actually, I'll ask you, what are some personal goals, musical goals you have from like here until, huh? The last time I did this, I was like here until the end of the year, but yeah. we're kind of at the end of the year now. How about like from here until the new school year? Any like, like having that cap of time, yeah. like what, what are some goals that you want to get like, my, done for yourself? My big goal for 2023 is just to meet a lot of people. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing for me because that's that's also something I didn't realize when I started studying, like how big of a deal it is to know people, to know people, um, not only like friends but also professional mm -hmm. relationships and all of that. And 
um, I think this is one of the things that I missed when I was back home because I was always like studying too hard. And when I was applying for jobs, I had to apply it for jobs in different states. And whenever you go f to a different region of the country, you just don't know anyone. And it's very hard to be like the, I don't know, the new person in the area. Yeah. And I've been through that like many, many times, like going to Brazil and then the US. Like I went to South Carolina first and then Illinois and now I'm here. So more and more I realize like how important that is. And with the busy schedule that we have here, it's hard to make the time for that to happen. Right. But I'm going to make the time for that to happen no matter what. Even right. if it means, it means like one hour less practicing a day, I think that's going to pay off in the future. Right. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you. Yeah. Thank you. Growing your, your little <laughs> yeah. knowledge of more people here. Yeah. Then. Thank you. Uh, yeah. This has been it then. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Alex Fargo on the EJV Talk Show. <laughs> we will, I'll be back with more and stuff. And... Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.